Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Ending Violence Association's Fall 2021 Training Forum. It is so nice to see all of you here today. My name is Wendy Potter, and I work at EVA BC as the Senior Manager of Cross-Sectoral Services. I am a white settler and would like to begin by acknowledging that EVA BC's main office is located on the unceded ancestral and traditional territory belonging to the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh Nations. We are deeply grateful to be able to do our work to support anti-violence workers and cross-sector initiatives on the lands that they have taken care of for generations. It is my honor to welcome Deborah Sparrow to do our opening for our conference today. Deborah Sparrow was born and raised on the Musqueam Reserve and is self-taught in Salish design and jewelry making. Deborah is an acclaimed weaver and is deeply involved with the revival of Musqueam weaving tradition. Her artwork can be seen in various museums and institutions. Deborah is a knowledge keeper and teacher educating others about the history, culture, beauty, integrity of her peoples through her artwork, activism, and speaking engagements. One of the topics Deborah speaks about is the need for a collaborative approach to education and the importance of knowing one's heritage. She credits her grandfather for grounding her in her heritage and enabling her to hear the voices of her ancestors. Thanks so much, Deborah. Over to you. Hi, everybody. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to uh, just take this opportunity to thank you for asking me to come forward. Uh, whatever you do, it's um, really, you know, to me, it's really so important. But what am I doing to? Um, support you all uh, in this kind of work that you all do that's so important. Um, on behalf of my chief, Wayne Sparrow, um, behalf of my women, my ancestors, the women that I stand on the shoulders of who are our ancestors, I just would like to take that opportunity to follow up uh, and say welcome to this this land we call Musqueam. That's where I am today. This land um, that we feel a responsibility for, but also feel we don't have a lot of say over because when we talk about our women and what we've come through over the last 150 years and what we're still fighting for, we talk about land and our mother, the earth. And today I want to take a moment to uh, hold up my hands to the women in the Wet'suwet'en territory who are being arrested violently by the RCMP for protecting their motherland, their mother. I'm just really upset about it. Um, it makes you feel helpless because you know what they're experiencing. When we talk about land acknowledgement, we're talking about this government of ours saying that they recognize that it's our land, but it's only our land when they feel like it's benefiting for them. And it's such a contradictory from our federal government, our provincial government. Um, I want to also recognize, you know, the sad things that have happened over this last month with this rain and the slides and the losing of the lives we had there. I want to acknowledge them. I know there was some women who um, lost their lives there. Um, and it's, you know, it, it's mind boggling that these slides are happening in one way, but in another way it's not because again, we are stripping their forests that held up those lands and enabled now these slides to happen. And if we don't heed from this, if we don't wake up and realize what we're doing, the violence to our land, to our resources, we just won't have any anymore. And it sounds, you know, it sounds like it's, it's easy to solve this problem, but it isn't. And we've gone through a hard time in the last year for COVID. And I wondered about all of the women and the things that are happening inside our homes. And one wish is we could share with them the way in which healing works um, in many different ways. Behind me is my textile, which is my healing. It's my passion. It's what's kept me focused and strong and it connects me to a, a history. It connects me to the women who were the original makers of this work. And I honor them on a daily basis. And I honor all of you for the work you do. Um, and if we could give every woman this kind of strength that we can stand on 
in the creative process, we as women wouldn't allow things to happen to us, but we have gone so far away from the connection that we have as humans to the reason we exist in our connectedness to this earth that these things happen and not only the women but the men because we have to raise the men and we raise them um, and we have to bring it back to this sort of respect that we have to stand in as human beings throughout the world we're becoming more and more violent if we look at the USA and what just happened with the young man who felt free to take a machine gun and well I don't know if it was a machine gun but it was similar and you know take two lives and then they called it self-defense when someone tried to you know use a skateboard to bring him down because he was shooting people so we have you know so much on our plates to think about but if we can come back to maybe that romantic place that's kind of a saving grace for for us um creativity is a gift from from god and the creator and and the gift back is that in which you see and i was mentioning earlier to the ladies that this is why i wanted to step out of tradition and and wrap the city in in the beauty and the integrity of this beautiful work so that when we're having a bad day and we're walking down the street, maybe we can look at a mural and we can just reflect for a moment and take a breath and that's a good moment, if it is a moment. So that's my contribution. If I can even do more, I will. Um, if there's a way I can wrap everyone in a blanket and comfort, that's my you know, vision for Vancouver and even for the, for the world, if we could just step back and remember why we exist. So um, once again, I, I always like to hold my hands up to all of you for what you do. And, you know, not always you're um, not always given that. So I think about it all the time. I think about, you know, what my contribution could be. So if any of you ever need, you know, just that conversation, that's, that's why we're here. That's why we do what we do. So I wish you all good words over the next few days or day that you are together and having discussions and looking for solutions. And it's a tough one, tough one out there. So I hold my hands up to you all until we meet again. So thank you everyone. Thank you, Deborah, for that beautiful opening and welcome us to the space. And thanks also for really reminding us of how important the land acknowledgement is, especially with kind of everything going on throughout our province. And we know many communities are preparing for more storms to come our way um, in the next few days. So I yeah, really appreciate you making that land acknowledgement meaningful and really connecting it for all of us to our everyday lives and the work that we're all doing around the province. Um, yeah, it was so nice to see you and thank you so much for taking the time. To be here with us today, Deborah. We really appreciate it. Um, before we begin our, our conference program, we just wanted to highlight some information for all of us this week. Given the focus of our work, we recognize that the topics and themes that we will be engaging with may at times feel heavy, upsetting, or challenging. You know, adding to the uncertain times we have all been navigating, we also want to really acknowledge the severe flooding and evacuations that have been impacting so many people, including many of you across the province. We know many communities are struggling and dealing with a lot right now, and we also are aware that gender-based violence often increases when there's natural disasters, so we're really mindful of that as well. So please take care of yourself over the next three days of the conference in whatever way works best for you. You can visit the Wellness Centre page on the ATF homepage for access to some additional resources and information on how to connect to supports. Um, we also wanted to share some general information about the conference as well with all of you today. Each portion of the training form is set up as a separate session and you will all access all sessions in the same way you access this session by clicking the join session button. If you have any tech issues or tech questions, you know, you're welcome to email ATF at endingviolence.org. So that's ATF at endingviolence.org and ATF stands for Annual Training Forum. There's also a frequently asked question page on the Training Forum website, which will have answers to many of your questions and guides for navigating the virtual platform. 
I also want to let you know we'll be doing some prize draws throughout the training forum. Please visit the funders and prize sponsors page for more information and hopefully uh, you'll win something, which is always nice. Um, I wanted to share a welcome on behalf of the Ending Violence Association of BC from our Executive Director, Nina Kang. We wanted to let everyone know that this message was pre-recorded before BC experienced the serious storms, flooding, and evacuations that occurred earlier this month. Ninu has held numerous leadership roles in her career, including as board president at both the Women's Research Centre and at Battered Women's Support Centre in Vancouver. Ninu was also one of the founding members of the Punjabi Women's Association and of the South Asian Community Coalition Against Youth Violence. She also co-chaired the Ending Relationship with Youth Society of BC. While at Mosaic for nearly 30 years, Minu served as a member of the executive leadership team. In addition to her work at Mosaic, Minu has been involved in a number of community initiatives, such as leading the Sori Organizing Against Racism and Hate Network. This network really worked to facilitate dialogue to establish best practices, raise public awareness about racism and hate activities, and develop response strategies to address these incidents in Surrey. Nino has facilitated training in anti-balance and anti-racism across North America and the globe, and is recognized as a leader and visionary in the field. Over to you, Nino. Hello, everyone. I'm Nino Kang, Eva BC's Executive Director. I identify as a settler on these lands, and I'm recording this message to you from the unceded and ancestral territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh peoples. I've had the pleasure of um, connecting with many of you over the years, and for those who I haven't had a chance to meet, I've been here at EVA for about a year and a half. Um, for one year, I was the co-executive director, and since July, in my current role as the executive director. I also worked with EVA in the past in various capacities in the anti-violence sector. And before coming here, I worked at an organization called Mosaic with the mandate of supporting settlement of newcomers. Even though this message is pre-recorded, I do plan to join in during the forum. And as well, I hope that I'll have a chance to connect with many of you over the next three days. Just a brief report for you on what's happening here at EVA BC. We've been thinking a lot about EVA BC and about how we can be stronger and more effective in meeting our goals. We've revised our mission and vision statement and redefined our strategic priorities. I look forward to sharing more details about this with you soon, but just know that we are going to be enhancing the work we've already been doing to develop more training and supports across sectors and for the frontline anti-violence workers. And also we wanna focus on how we can help increase the capacity to meet underserved populations. I look forward to demonstrating our commitment to the intersectional decolonial analysis in our work. And we want to better communicate with you about what we need to know and to do this important work to develop our knowledge of anti-oppression, anti-racism, decolonizing practices to enhance social change. To help us be more effective, we've also created a new organizational structure, structure with three main public facing service streams that better reflect the categories of the work that we do. First, provincial services with Kate Roster as the senior manager. Another area, cross-sectoral services with Wendy Potter within the manage, senior manager's role. And for communications and prevention, we have Corinne Stavnes taking the lead. Our fourth um, stream is an in-house stream as administration and finance services headed by Habiba Rashid, who I know so many of you have had the pleasure of working with over her dedicated time here at EVA BC. We have also strengthened our team with some new staff positions. So during this forum, watch for some new faces among the well-known ones. That was just a brief introduction about the direction we're taking and the vision we have for EVA BC. And I look forward to sharing more details with you about this in the coming months. The themes of this training forum is building on resilience, enhancing capacity to support survivors through uncertain times. We hope the lineup of sessions 
will meet you where you are and help you find what you need to enhance your capacity and find connection. These certainly have been uncertain times for many of us, and especially so for those communities we support. The pandemic, of course, continues to affect everyone, but the confirmation of the unmarked graves of residential schools across Canada have made these times of reckoning for reconciliation across this country. This morning, Chief Roseanne Kasmir of the Tukumloops Tushokmak Nation will speak to us about the ongoing impacts of colonialism and the residential school system and the resilience of the Indigenous communities. We also continue to be impacted by the toxic drug crisis with so many lives continuing to be lost. More lives in BC have been lost to the toxic drug supply than COVID-19 in the past year which is just devastating and highlights the need for action. Later this morning, uh, we will hear from Dr. Nancy Poole, who will help us consider how we can find resilience with her talk, lifting each other up, trauma, violence, gender, and substance use, working towards equity and resilience. This last year also saw people in Black, Indigenous, and other communities of people of color and their allies across the world join in anti-racism efforts like Black Lives Matter. People are talking, which is a great start. We are just at the beginning of this journey. On Friday morning, we hope you can join us for a panel discussion where we will bring together some of the local people embedded in anti-violence work for the discussion on how we can build better supports for racialized, marginalized survivors of gender-based violence. I think of a story of the willow, willow tree that is hit by a huge windstorm and all around the trees are falling, but because it can bend in the wind, it survives. We've all been incredibly resilient, but that doesn't mean it's been easy. These are uncertain times. We can't predict where, we're, where we will be a year from now but we can be hopeful. Tomorrow morning, the keynote from Vicki Reynolds will speak to us about solidarity, sustainability and resilience, responding to gender-based violence. Together, we can find the resilience to be stronger than ever. I wish you all a wonderful time in the three days of learning ahead. I hope you will also be able to take the time to find personal restoration at the wellness sessions on Friday afternoon and to connect with others at the networking sessions tomorrow. One day in not too far distance in the future, I hope to be able to meet with all of you in person. But until then, let's celebrate how we've been able to come together now, more of us than ever, and the connection that we've been able to make without having to travel. We here, the EVA BC team, are ready and prepared to support you in making these next three days a great experience for you to be able to learn, connect, and celebrate. Thank you. Thank you, Minu, for that warm welcome. And I think the concept of resilience we know is becoming more meaningful every day with everything that's happening in BC. Um, yeah, and hope everyone gets a chance to, you know, hope we're able to gather in person at our next ATF. It would be lovely to connect with everyone that way. Uh, next, I'd like to share a message from BC. Uh, Minister of Public Safety and Solicitor General Mike Farnworth. Mike was raised in Port Coquitlam and has lived there for more than 40 years. He earned a bachelor's degree in geography at Simon Fraser University and was elected to Port Coquitlam City Council for three terms. Mike Farnworth was re-elected as MLA for Port Coquitlam in 2017. He was first elected as MLA for Port Coquitlam Brook Mountain in 1991, and he was re-elected in 1996. 2005, 2009, and 2013. As MLA, he served in numerous cabinet positions, including the Ministry of Health and the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, and he is our current Minister of Public Safety and Solicitor General. Over to you, Mike. Hi, I'm Mike Farnworth, 
the Minister of Public Safety and Solicitor General for British Columbia. I want to begin by offering each of you my sincere thanks for the investment you're making in training right now and for your ongoing commitment to furthering the safety of vulnerable people in British Columbia. These are extraordinary times, times that have brought changes in how we go about our lives, where we work and study, how we gather with friends and family, and even our living situations. Many of these changes have been about furthering our individual and collective safety. But at the same time, they've created more demand for services to help people to mitigate their risk of being victimized, to escape domestic violence and child abuse, and to move from risk and victimization to a place of safety and survivorship. We are acutely aware of what some have experts have called a shadow pandemic involving femicide at the hands of men, domestic violence and sexual assault, with disproportionate impacts on Indigenous women. When I became minister in 2017, nobody could have foreseen the COVID-19 pandemic. But we did recognize at that time the need to ensure that people, particularly vulnerable people, were able to access needed supports and services to help keep them safe. Right away, we started to invest more in services that help victims of crime and women and children impacted by violence. And in our first full provincial budget, we made a three-year commitment to better meet demand for programs and services like counseling, outreach, and crisis support for women and children who experience domestic violence, sexual assault, and other crimes. This included $20 million to EVA BC to support the delivery of coordinated emergency sexual response services by community-based organizations throughout BC. This was over and above the steady commitment that I, my ministry makes year after year to fund hundreds of victim services and violence against women programs. All of this is to say that we recognize and appreciate and support the work that you do. We have your back, and we appreciate that in turn you have the backs of so many. As we continue to navigate COVID-19, we recognize more than at any time in our recent history how critical your frontline work is. We still have work to do within and beyond BC's borders to ensure that gender, ethnicity, and sexual orientation do not place people at a disproportionate risk of violence and to eliminate violence overall. British Columbians are extremely fortunate to have EVA BC, its decades of experience and knowledge and its leadership in annual forums like this virtual one. I know that you and the countless British Columbians you help will benefit from these three training days. Again, my sincere thanks on behalf of the province. Thank you, Minister Farnworth, for your words about EVA BC and all the work that the anti-violence sector has do is been doing this last year and a half, which has been a, a very difficult year, I think probably one of the most difficult in the sector's history. Um, we're really grateful to the BC Ministry of Public Safety and Solicitor General for their support of EVA BC's fall training forum and the ongoing support of BC's anti-violence sector, which has been doing such amazing and difficult work this last year and a half, as always. Um, again, this morning we will be sort of moving into our keynote sessions shortly. We will be having keynote sessions from Chief Casimir and Nancy Poole. Each of these sessions will take place in its own virtual room. To access the session, please return to the Training Forum website homepage and click the Join Session button. Our first keynote will begin immediately after uh, this presentation closes at around the current time, about 1025. I look forward to seeing you all there. Let's head there now together. <laughs> 